Hey, and welcome to Friendly Pharmacy 5. My name is Lindsay Dixon. I'm a pharmacist from Canada. And today I have with me uh, actually Marina, who we called Sophia in one of my last videos. So Marina is joining us from Brazil. And she's going to tell us her story about uh, how she uh, experienced COVID-19 as a young person. You're pretty young, aren't you, Marina? Yes, I'm 30. You're 30 years old. Okay. So Marina um, was diagnosed with COVID-19 in September, and she's just going to tell us a little bit about her story. Before you tell us about uh, your experience with COVID-19, Marina, could you tell us where are you from in Brazil? Hi, first I want to thank you for thank inviting you. me to your Facebook, uh, YouTube channel. And sorry for my English, not so good, but I'm, I will try to do my best. <laughs> it's excellent. Thank you. It's excellent. Thank you. Uh, I'm from Bauru, a city near São Paulo, like three hours from São Paulo. São Paulo is a big city, and we are very close to to São Paulo, uh, we always there, and my city is uh, in south, 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 east, south, south, east, south, east, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, how big of a city is yours? What is the population like there? Um, almost four, four hundred thousand, yeah. Okay, so it's a good sized city, a good yes. Size. We had two malls and a lot of restaurants and it's a big city, yeah. Okay, okay. And what season is it in Brazil? Because you're opposite our season, aren't you? Yes, we just got in spring now, in 21st of September, but it don't feel like spring here. Uh, what, this, are the, what are the temperatures like there right now? This week, we got to 400, uh, 40, 40, sorry, 40 degrees, 40 degrees Celsius. Yes. Very hot here. Wow. Wow. I can't even imagine that. Yeah. I saw. Yeah, that's, 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 that's really hot for spring. Very hot. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And you are also, a you are a new mom. You had, you had your, your first baby, uh, back in February, just before yes. COVID. She's, she's eight months. She's eight months. I've seen pictures. She's beautiful. Yes. And you're, you're also a business Mom owner. Mom face now. Oh, no. <laughs> Without makeup. <laughs> we don't have time to. <laughs> and, well, and you're also a business owner. So what has that been like being a new mom and a business owner uh, in Brazil during, during the COVID pandemic? At first, I thought it was, uh, I, I tried to, to think um, positive. Posit positive because mm -hmm. I thought I'm I'm home uh, I stay more more time with her my husband staying at home too working from home mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I, I try to, to think positive since the pandemic started mm -hmm. good for you good for you <laughs> yeah. how how did the pandemic affect your business we stayed closed for five months so mm -hmm. we try to sell on, online and because you sell you sell clothing clothing and shoes yes clothing and shoes okay mm -hmm. we have a lot of clients so we stay in touch by online whatsapp and, mm -hmm. and so you were online. able to yeah, and we try to to sell that way uh-huh but the, the store the, the store was, was closed for five months wow wow that's a huge change that's yes. a that's a really big change. But I think in, in the start was necessary. Mm -hmm. Because it was so new, it was a new no, virus. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. No one really knew what to do. Um, and how has it been in Brazil? Have people been able to follow the health recommendations? Have the has the messaging been clear? What has your experience been with that? We we've heard some things, but I just want to know what your what your perspective is. I think Brazilian people are very, I don't know, we don't believe until we see. <laughs> mm, <laughs> okay. So at first, everybody was scared, of course, mm -hmm. because it was a disease mm -hmm. and nobody knew exactly what 
this, this is this may cause. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I don't know, the time was passing by and I think because at that beginning we stay at home mm -hmm. and nothing happened. So in one month, everything was the same here. Like mm -hmm. nobody cares. I don't know how to explain, but we I just saw so. now everybody went normal and now the curve, I don't know how to say. Yeah, the curve. Okay. We can't uh, slow down the curve now. Now it's out of control. Out of control, yes. Yeah. And I think that happened here in Canada a little bit as well as far as when we all went home and schools closed and stores closed, the curve flattened. And then people started to say, well, no one's in the hospital. Yes, yes. This is, why are we doing this? This is silly. This is not serious. Like, everybody's talking. And so. Yeah, I can definitely see, see that. Do you think the messaging, the messaging from your president and from the political people in Brazil was good? Or do you think it was confusing? Or what was your experience? It was very confusing because the doctors uh, said, one thing and our president said another thing like oh, he said oh. oh it's just a little cold don't worry and everybody who follows uh, him ah, okay it's nothing the mm -hmm. president is in the streets he's doing like commissions and in, in the middle of pandemic the president was at streets like eating food from the streets and and everybody who followed him, ah, okay, it's not. Yeah, that's yeah. difficult. I actually remember seeing a picture of him at a food truck. Yeah. I, I remember that picture. That went around the world, that one. I think yeah. it, it was in April. In April, yeah. And what are things like in Brazil now? Is everything pretty much back to normal or? No, I think nobody, uh, nobody is staying at home anymore. Nobody. Okay. Okay. I think just old people, like very old, <coughs> and but nobody else is because we have to work. We yeah. can't stay at home. No, it's mm -hmm. hard because we can't stay at home, and we have to work because we we are since March 19 <coughs> home, so we can't stay anymore. Mm -hmm. We have to work, and it's hard because. We don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I have a I have a cough. I don't have COVID. <laughs> I just oh my God. <laughs> it's hard because it's a country where people need to work. Yeah. And it's also a country where people uh, work a lot. And the government hasn't been giving people money like they have, I think, in Canada. Right? So they, they give the, the government gave us uh, six hundred reais per mm -hmm. month. Okay, so that's people like who are, that are like uh, autonomous people who are like their own business owners, yeah. or yeah, so that's like two hundred dollars a month, I guess. So that that doesn't go very far. I guess it's something, but doesn't doesn't go that far. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. And then what happened to you in in early September? You started not feeling very well because I'm I'm breastfeeding. Okay. I thought I was just tired. I was, uh, my, my body was very weak. And mm -hmm. I thought it was because I was breastfeed, breastfeeding. So I didn't care. I thought I'm with my baby at home. I'm not going anywhere. So it's impossible for me to be sick. I'm, I'm like having COVID. So I'm I'm I probably just tired because of my baby and but my my I I had fever. Okay. okay. So when I started having fever, I was worse because it's not weak. Mm -hmm. I was not weak. And then I went to the hospital mm -hmm. because I was I I I thought maybe. I have COVID, but no, it's impossible. So, okay, right. I'm going to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. to... 
just to check. Pay. Yeah. Just to be sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I went there and I talked to the doctor and he said, no, you have symptoms of COVID. And I said, no, just maybe I'm just tired. And he said, no, maybe you should stay at home and not seeing like nobody. Okay. Anybody. So, it's like, so he directed mom. you to isolate. Just stay at home and mm -hmm. I will give the all the antibiotics and medicines to to treat COVID. And I said, I will not take everything because I'm not sick. I was like <laughs> <laughs> I, I I couldn't believe this with COVID. Yeah, I because was, at that time your symptoms were not that bad, right? No, I was and very very tired. Very like tired. My my headaches. Headaches. But, okay. Yeah. Okay. But just just that. Any and nausea? I went home. I went home and I talked to my specialist that I treat in São Paulo, a doctor. Oh, okay, just a minute. Okay, just a minute, because I want to. I just want to clarify. So, your you went to the hospital because I I took notes here because we we talked about this before. You went to the hospital and you came home with prescription. And your prescription, just so uh, the people watching are aware, you had you had fairly mild symptoms at this stage, and you had not been diagnosed yet with COVID, but your doctor suspected that you likely had COVID. Mm -hmm. And so you being a 29 year old woman in Brazil went home with a prescription. I lost 29, now I'm 30. Yeah. yeah. In the middle of class. <laughs> you, went, you went home with a prescription for azithromycin, 500 milligrams daily for five days, prednisone, which is a corticosteroid, 20 milligrams once a day for five days, um, diperona or giperona, which is uh, for pain or fever. Fever, yeah. We actually don't have that here in Canada. Um, and that was to t be taken every six hours as needed. And I, I think Dipirona is like an Advil. I think. Yes, that's right. So, yeah. So that was just for as needed for pain or fever. And then Ivermectin, six milligrams, two capsules as a single dose, which I have seen. It's actually um, an anti parasitic medication, but I've seen that a lot of Brazilians are using this one or uh, post what we call post-exposure prophylaxis. So you came home with a prescription for four medications. And now I know that you have a history of uh, venous thromboembolism or thrombosis. Yes. So then what did you do? Four years ago. Four years ago. I had ago. an episode and yeah. I treat in a, uh, with a doctor in Sao okay. Paulo. Okay. He's like chief in Sirio Libanese. Yes, which is one of the uh, best hospitals in Brazil. The best hospital, yeah, Brazil. And so just, so just to be clear, you had a blood clot in your leg four years ago. Yes. And so you have a specialist in Sao Paulo, in the, state, in the city of Sao Paulo. Yes. And you Actually, called. I, I called because I, um, I had baby. So I yes. was treating uh, these days with... Uh, an anticoagulant gynecologist. No, gynecologist. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And I went there, and she, he, she said to me, "If you had symptoms of COVID, you call me." Okay. Like, Good. In February, she said this. To okay. Me. Yes. So I called her, and I said, "Oh, hi! I you you told me to call you," and she said she said to me, "I think you better call to your." To your doctor in São Paulo, because we are studying, and you have uh, you had this disease, and you treat with him, and, mm -hmm. and we we know that they are I don't know how to say uh, eles estão ligados os doentes. Ah, the two the two things can be linked because we know yes. we know that COVID can leave people more predisposed to blood clots. Yes. So she's saying there may be a connection. You should call your spe your call specialist him. in yes. some follow about this. Okay. And so I you called did that. him, hmm. and he said to me, "Don't take any of this medication." Oh wow! And I said, "Oh my God, what am I supposed to do? Because I don't know if I am sick." I went to the hospital. The doctor gave four wow. medications wow. to me, and 
my doctor in São Paulo said, don't take any of those. Mm. Oh my just goodness. take, just go to the pharmacy now and buy the um, Clexani. The it's uh, Clexani. Clexani is um, enoxaparin, and this is a low yeah. molecular weight heparin. 40, 40 milligrams. Okay, it's an anticoagulant. Uh, injection. Yeah, and it's an injection. Yes. And so your specialist in Sao Paulo told you to take this, um, yes. this anticoagulant to help prevent you from getting blood clots because I had to take two, okay. two uh, per day. Two a day for how long? Forty days. How many? Forty. No, Forty, 40 milligram, milligrams. Oh, okay. Two a day. Two a day. Okay. Okay. All right. And 80 milligrams a day. Okay. And so you did that? Yes. I, I'm doing. This. You're doing that. Okay. Yep. And how long do you have to do that for? How many days? For, I think, more five more days. Five more days. So it's been about six weeks. Yes. Five or six weeks. Okay. And then, okay, so so then you decided to follow the instructions of your specialist and not the hospital physician. Yeah. The problem is that you no, know, we still because don't. Because he knows me and yeah. he knows my my condition and yeah. he knows about COVID. Yeah. He's studying and seeing this every day, so mm -hmm. I trust I trust him. Yeah, and I think it's very. It's very difficult as a patient. And he say get... he said uh, in in São Paulo in these hospitals like in Sírio Libanês the I think yes the two, uh, the two the best hospitals in Brazil they are not uh, giving these medications. Interesting, very yes. interesting. The doctors are fighting here. Yeah, that's difficult as a patient to yes. to be part of that. So, so I, I didn't take this medication. I just take the took the enoxaparin. Yeah, the anticoagulant. Okay. Yes. And so so you decide to do that. You still didn't know whether you had COVID. No. So, and so, I was very anxious. I did. I didn't uh, think I was sick. But when I went went to the hospital and the doctor said, "Oh, you may, you may have COVID," and I. I was anxious. You were anxious. Like, right. I and, don't know because and, I have my baby and I have my husband and I have my mom and I don't know what to do. So I heard that in the and you could <laughs> funny to say because in the shopping mall, yes, in the parking, they yes. had they are they were doing the tests like Okay, in a parking lot at the shopping mall. Yes. It's okay. okay. Because you, when you think like, it's, it's crazy. It's okay. So, and, but the other the other problem was that you could not get a, a nasal swab right away. No. They, it was going to take because a whole. My symptoms just uh, I had them for like three days. Yeah. And he said I had to wait like three more days. Or four days to he get this swap. Yes. He thought it might not be accurate. Yes. Okay. So you're a mom. You are not well. You are taking some medication for what might be COVID just to help prevent a uh, blood clot. And you see a rapid test opportunity at the uh, at the mall, and you decide to take it. And people can watch the video. I've did the video about your experience. It was very interesting because we've not seen anything like that in Canada. And so you paid um, 120 hay eyes, I think, to yes. get the test done. And how long did it take for you to get those results? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And I think they said, how accurate was it supposed to Nine, be? 97%. That's pretty high. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so you did that. And then it turned you, out it was negative. It was negative. Okay. And I said, oh, okay, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, probably just, I'm probably just weak. Probably just weak. Where's, where? So at Where's that point, did you stop um, isolating at that point? 
Mm, no, no. I went like I not I'm I was yeah I didn't see my family like my mom and my dad because I said I was free but I will the doctor ha, uh, gave me the um, pedido the oh, the prescription the pres prescription for me to do the swap so I thought I will wait and do the test the doctor told me to do and then I then you I will was uh, yeah <laughs> okay okay so you so you had a negative rapid test that you paid for then you then a few days later you did have the throat swab and then I think it took you about 10 days from the time that you actually went to hospital till the time you got your results it was 10 or 11 days till yeah. you got your results of your throat swab Mm -hmm. And by that time you weren't you weren't feeling well. I, I remember you were you were sick. I started to feel feeling sicker. Feeling like sick. yes. My body was hurting. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of pain in my lungs, like mm -hmm. my back here. Yeah. yeah. Both sides. Wow. And I was very, very weak. Like yeah. very weak. Did you feel like eating anything or were you nauseous? No. Or? I lost four kilos. Or four kilograms, so like yeah. 10 pounds, like over 10 yeah. pounds. Wow, that's a lot. You're not a big person. Because so. I couldn't eat. I was not feeling good. I couldn't rest because I had my baby. So wow. I was feeling weaker and weaker. Wow. wow. And my, my head hurt, hurts a lot. Headache? At that point. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So you're not feeling well. And then you did get the swab results yes. and swab results were. And that point I was, uh, I was staying at home. Like, yeah. Yeah. A lot. You sick. I, I didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And so then you received the results that the swab was positive. Yes. Was that surprising? No, no, because <laughs> no, because in the first, in the, uh, in the first time I went to the hospital, yeah, I couldn't believe because I was not feeling very sick. Mm. And then, like ten days later, I was feeling very sick. so. Mm. I I had sure I was sick. I had COVID. Wow. Okay, so you, so I, I assume you stayed home. You still weren't feeling well. You're not eating. You're nauseous. My baby was crying a lot mm. and she had fever. So I think she, she was sick too. She might've had it. Yeah. And but my doctor said, ah, don't test her because it's too. What are you going to do for her anyways? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's she's good. okay. It's just, just yeah. uh, watch her and see she's um, breathing okay. And yeah. Yeah, and it's good because, in, I mean, in kids, it's not good, but in kids, we know that usually it's a very mild infection. She didn't have any rashes or anything on her skin or no, nothing like nothing. that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So if she had it, it sounds like it was very She was mild. a bit irritated okay. for like two days and yeah. crying a lot. I think maybe she had her body, I don't know, hurt, hurt it. I don't know. Yeah, okay. But she's okay now. Maybe she was in pain a little bit, but yeah. because she cried, yeah. but she was okay. Yeah. It's hard to know with babies because they can't tell yeah. you. <laughs> so that was around the 11th. You found out September 11th, you found out that you had positive results. And then I, on September 20th, you noticed that you couldn't smell anything. Smell or, or taste or taste. Yeah. Wow. Nothing. Okay, so can you can you smell anything today? Are yes. you able to smell? I have a perfume here, and okay. um, I don't know if I ha I want to to smell things like my baby, her head. I miss <laughs> it. <laughs> wow, because we don't we don't know. With some people, this comes back, and with some people, it doesn't. So it's, we still don't really know if this is a permanent thing I hope it's not I have a friend who had COVID 60 days ago and he is starting to smell now 
Two months later. And paste. Two months. Wow. Wow. Well, I mean, that's good that it's coming back, but we know that this loss of sense of smell can be a real, um, really common with with COVID. So it's interesting that you had that. And then what happened to you around September 24th? You were back in hospital. Yes, I was feeling um, very weak again. And I had a very um, strong fever. Okay, high fever. High fever, yes, like 40 degrees. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. High fever. yes, yes. And I, and I said, I'm not okay. And I think I have to go to the hospital again because I don't, ha I don't know what I have. And wow. I called to my doctor, the Sao Paulo doctor again. And he said, it's too much time to feeling this bad. Yes, and maybe yes. you, you, I will say to you to come to Sao Paulo because I want to see you. Oh, and I said wow. to him, I can't. I can't go now because of my baby, because I'm feeling weak. I don't know if I can handle the, like, travel three hours. And no, I will do the test here and I send to you and we are treating like this. And, I, and okay, I went to the hospital. Uh, I, I took, I don't know, in Brazil, we take uh, medicine in the hospital. Like, I don't know how to explain, mm -hmm. but I explained to you, maybe you can, I don't know, you sure. can sure. understand better than me. And I took medicines in the hospital and the doctor said I had a uh, infection in my blood because of the COVID that still in my blood since right. I had. So maybe like still. Days ago. Yeah. So what I would guess is that maybe they were seeing- And then I had to take antibiotics, right. not the same, another one. Yes. And I, I, I sent to my doctor in Sao Paulo the pres prescription and he said, oh, it's okay, you can take this. Oh. And yes, and I took, and now I'm feeling like better, mm -hmm. much better. Yeah, and the uh, antibiotics yeah. that you described, was uh, cefiroxine 250 milligrams one twice a day for seven days and that one can be used for pneumonia in some cases they also mm -hmm. give you a few other things like buscopan they give you some gravel for nausea and he that he gave me a uh, thing to my stomach yeah buscopan for for abdominal flora chill the other one flora chill for yeah, flora chill which is a probiotic yes to help because my stomach was hurting a lot and then they gave you medication by iv because you really were not were not well yeah. they gave you no i was at this day i was like i thought i was going to die really I because i was feeling so bad yes did you have pain in your lungs what were your what were you yes feeling? and i did um angiotomography Oh, and you did uh, a CT scan of your yes, chest. Yes, because, because my doctor was afraid I had embolia. Like a pulmonary embolism. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that was okay. Yes, that's okay. That was okay. So the in so in your IV, they gave you dexamethasone, uh, which we know is uh, an anti-inflammatory that is we're seeing that has some success in treating COVID. Uh, among other things, they gave you omeprazole, which is to help your stomach. Yes. They gave you some gipirona, which, as we stated earlier, is for pain or fever. So you got quite a concoction of medications. So they they looks like they treated you pretty seriously. They took this yes. seriously. Yes. Yeah. And I at the time I was taking the IV, I was feeling so much better. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And we know that Donald Trump got dexamethasone recently too. And and uh, so if you felt better after and he felt better after, I don't know, must, <laughs> must do something. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, and so that was, that took you about three weeks. Um, that's about a three week story. And how are you feeling today? So over a month later, you're a young, healthy person 
Yes. You don't have any other uh, medical issues other than one blood clot a few years ago. So mm -hmm. we're talking to you five or six weeks later. How are you today? I take COVID very seriously now. Really? Because as young people, we, we think ah, I'm not get serious. But mm -hmm. yes, we do. And I don't want this to anyone. I don't want to anyone feel what I feel, like I felt, because it was not good. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I think we have to to take care of ourselves and use masks and do whatever we can to not get the COVID. Mm -hmm. And I think if you don't treat right and don't pay attention for the signs, maybe you can get worse. And maybe I don't know what can happen. Even uh, we are young. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So would you say you feel like you're 100% better today? Yes. Now, yes, today. Oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. And um, is there anything else you would like to say? Do you want to send a message out to your Brazilian I think it's friend? very odd because I had the COVID and my husband didn't. And we and stay at the same house for this time. And he stayed with the baby and he cared. Né? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so, so but I don't you, know. We we drank the water in the same bottle. I don't know. We I don't know what to think about this. Mm -hmm. Did uh, did you wear a mask in the house once you knew no. you were sick? No. So that wouldn't have been been part of it either. No. And we had water at the same bottle. So this is very odd. Mm -hmm. And do Brazilians take uh, vitamins like vitamin D? I mean, it's very sunny there a lot. No. Yes. Don't so you I don't think just people who need this, but not mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very interesting that your husband did not get it. Yes, that's a very. I always think about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't yes. know how this virus works, and I don't know. It's very interesting, and we know that there are some people who are what we call super spreaders. I didn't take any any. Uh, Medida de precaução, like, oh, like caution, cautionary measures. Or you didn't in my any, house. We didn't take husband. any special precautions in your house. No. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know what it's. He's just lucky. I don't know what to think about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thank you so much, Marina. Is there anything else you would like to you would like to add? I don't know. Maybe that's it. That's <laughs> it. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations I, for your the job you are doing oh, to help wow. people to know better about this and everything that's going on in the yeah, world. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to share. I wanted you to share your story because we are seeing even in Canada and and in the U.S. and I'm sure it's the same around the world that young people are not taking this virus seriously. Yeah, and I didn't. I have to say. Yeah, yeah, and, and thank you for being honest. And so it's mm -hmm. great that people can hear your story. They can hear that this was much more than just a flu or just a cold. It's something to be taken seriously. It's something mm -hmm. that can really alter your life for a certain period of time. I'm really happy that you didn't get severely ill and that you're doing great today. Yes. And so I think, I think you're doing a great thing by sharing your story. And thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day as a mom and as a business owner Thank to you. Uh, share your story. <laughs> and I, I hope that you're healthy and safe from here Thank on in. You. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marina. Bye-bye. <laughs>